Hey guys, Vikas over here and you are watching Topsy Labs. Guys, today I am again with a new video around motion sensing and homotropism around it. It's going to be a multi-part video series. In the first video, which is going to be this one, we'll connect a PI sensor to an ESP8266 VMOS model with test motor firmware in it. We'll configure the test motor for the PI sensor and publish amplitude messages accordingly. In the second part, we'll onboard the data to OpenHAP using amplitude. We'll add the device to the OpenHAP completely using the admin YE. We'll also create relevant rules to control a device using the sensor. In the third video of the series, we'll see how we can configure OpenHAP, but this time using text-based approach rather than UI. We'll also see how we can use the sensor with Node-RED in an upcoming video. So being said that, let's get started guys. Okay, uh, let's start with the connection first. The connection is pretty simple. You just need to connect the VCC of the PR sensor model to the 5 volt supply. If you are using EMOS or Node MCU, you can directly connect to the onboard 5 volt pin. Then ground goes to ground and the data output pin of the PR sensor model goes to any data input pin of your EMOS or Node MCU model. You can use also a uh, simple ESP8266 bare bone models, but if for flashing dash motor, you would need an USB to your converter for that. The way it works is as soon as the PR model senses motion, it drives the output pin, which is connected to the particular digital input pin of your ESP8266 model. Based on the mode that the PR model is configured, the output may stay high for certain amount of time. So if you are using repeating trigger mode, it will stay high till the machine is detected. And if you are using single trigger mode, it will stay high for a certain amount of time that is config can be configured using the potentiometer in the PIR sensor itself. So you can use any mode you want that basically depends on your application. Uh, but yeah, particularly I use the single trigger mode. And whenever the test motor receives uh, the signal in the detail pin, there is a rule that is uh, running inside test motor that would send an on message to a particular amplitude topic. And as soon as it detects, like you know, the pin goes low, it will send an off message to the same topic. And those messages can be consumed by any devices uh, connected to the broker and subscribe to the topic. And we can do certain automations based on those. So that's how it is going to work. I'm using a Node MC model with PR sensor and with an output LED that is directly connected to the output pin of the PR sensor. So it will just visually let me know it has detected motion. You'll find the link to the circuit diagram down below in the description. So now let's see how we can flash test motor firmware and how we can configure it, adding rules and all that. So let's get rid of the PC and let's check that out. So I've connected my device to the PC and we'll start with flashing the device with test motor. So as I'm using a ESP8266 based model, I'll use test motorizer. If you are using ESP32 based models, you can go with ESP flasher or the tools, right? So in test motorizer, uh, I'll just select the port, then we'll go with the release and just select the default one. Else. And in config, I'll also configure. Okay, I will do that later. First, let's tasmotize it. And you should erase and write the firmware. Now we need to configure the test motor device uh, with our Wi Fi that it needs to connect to. And if you want with the MQTT configuration, so I'll quickly set it up. Then I'll go with the generic module, won't change anything here. Then the MQTT configuration and save. And you should configure the device now. If you click on get IP, we should get the IP address uh, that has been assigned to the model. Yep. Now we can take this IP address and we can open this up 
with any browser and we can proceed with the further configurations. Now primarily we will be using console for all the configurations related to PIR sensor. So for task mode, PIR sensor is nothing but a switch. So it has to be configured accordingly. But we don't want the default switch behavior of that is, you know, predefined in task motor. So we'll do a couple of configurations. First is we'll set switch mode one and we'll enable it. Okay. Then we'll detach the default uh, MPD messages that is being published when the switch is turned on or off. Over here, it is going to be the motion sensed by the PI sensor, which takes the output pin high on sense of motion. On sensing motion. Okay, so if you want to know more about it, you can definitely go to the comments uh, for the test motor. I'll provide the link down below in the description. After that, we need to define a rule that will basically publish MQTT messages when the PI sensor senses motion, right? Basically, the output pin goes high or it goes low. So to do that, I'll just copy this. Let me show you the rule. Okay. So over here, uh, this rule one actually, when switch one goes one, it publishes a message to this particular topic. So I'll just change this couple of things. Happy, and I'll make it waiting. So on one, it will publish on. On zero, it will publish off. And that's it. We are not using button. So I'll just put it here. Okay. Now we need to enable the rule. To do that, we can just type in rule one. Now let's check like when the model detects motion, it is published into the topic or not. Okay, one thing I forgot is we need to configure the device for the PIR sensor. So over here, uh, let's check the GPIO pin that you have used. So for me, it is going to be D7. So I'll go with this and we'll go with switch one. Okay, save it. Okay, and let's see the console. And you can see it has already started publishing messages. So now let's do some movement. And yep, it detects motion. It sends an on message. And after some time, it sends the off message. As we have configured the PR module and trigger mode, not in continuous mode. So it goes on, then it goes off. Okay. So let's do this once again. Yep. Now this uh, messages can be uh, you know ingested to open a platform, and we can do automations. So we'll check that out in upcoming videos. So stay tuned for those and I hope you have liked this video. If so, hit the thumbs up button and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, consider subscribing it. See you next time with our next video. Till then, goodbye.